Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. Um, this is Graviton Sustainability, Building Sustainable Infrastructure with EC2 Graviton. My name is Chad Schmutzer. I'm a solutions architect focused on sustainability with EC2 Graviton. So thanks for joining us. Um, we have a lot to get through today, so um, we'll go as quickly as we can. We'll power through this. We've got about 15 minutes to, to talk about and learn how AWS design, designed Graviton-based instances for energy efficiency. We'll learn how adopting Graviton-based instances reduces the carbon footprint of EC2 workloads. And finally, we'll learn how to get started with Graviton-based instances, All right? So let's jump into this. All right, so let's talk about the journey of silicon innovation at AWS. Um, with the AWS Nitro system, we've moved functionality away from the traditional hypervisor and into a purpose-built chip. This improves I.O. performance, it frees up host CPU cycles, and it raises the security bar of our servers. So why am I telling you about the Nitro system? Well, it's because the Graviton processor, right, which we've built uh, as a, as a custom CPU that delivers the best pri price performance and energy efficiency for a wide range of cloud workloads is built on top and next to the Nitro system. So they work hand in hand to help deliver um, the most powerful and efficient compute available in the cloud. Uh, so why would we build our own chips, right? And the answer to that is simple. It's that we build our own chips when it leads to direct customer value. And in this case, by building our own chips, we get to specialize uh, the hardware for our use cases at AWS specifically, right? So in a nutshell, we tailor the Nitro system to the AWS infrastructure to improve the, both the performance and the security of our servers. So we also get better speed of execution, right? We own, since we own the end-to-end -end development process from defining the product to deploying it into the data center, it enables us to bring te technology to customers faster. So in, in a nutshell, we shrink the time from concept to deployment by building our, our own chips. It also uh, enables innovation, right? So building our own chips also allows um, a faster innovation and therefore creating more value for our customers, right? So when you have the same teams developing the silicon, the server, the software, the hypervisor all under one roof, you get to innovate and optimize the end-to-end -end with the actual customer use cases in mind rather than optimizing the different components in a silo. And finally, uh, security, right? Nitro provides us a mechanism to enhance the security of our servers uh, through a hardware route of trust, a verification of firmware on the server and limiting interactions and with the host to a narrow authenticated and auditable API. <clears throat> so uh, in a nutshell, uh, Nitro is a fundamental rethink of how virtualization in the cloud should be done. So essentially, um, Nitro system is a combination of hardware, software, um, purpose-built chips, uh, building with AWS environment in mind. Um, you know, over time, there's been five generations of custom chips. It's a it's a purpose-built, custom-built hypervisor built just for AWS, and it's at this point powering over 500 different instance types. All right, so we talked about the performance and security, um, but there's one more aspect of Nitro system that I, you know, I wanted to share with you. It's an, it's a modular design, um, and almost like a sort of a Lego of components, right? Where you have the Nitro system with common components uh, across all AWS servers in AWS, and this ended up significantly accelerating our engineering pace. But keep in mind, it also allowed things like up to 60% packet rate increase, up to 30% lower latency, and as you can see here, lower overall power consumption. And this is again why we're talking about Nitro. When we when we when we uh, pair it with with Graviton, Nitro also allowed us to innovate faster, right? So before Nitro, it took uh, eleven years to grow from one instance up to seventy. Um, with Nitro, we grew it from uh, seventy to around five hundred in just five years. Um, and these five hundred instance types provide our customers with the flexibility to choose the optimal uh, instances for their specific uh, use cases, right? You always want to right size the instance type to the workload. Okay, so let's move forward to Graviton, right? Um, so let's talk about Graviton in, in terms of host compute. So Graviton is a, is a line of ARM-based server processors that are available exclusively in AWS. Graviton processors provide the best performance and price performance in their instance families. All right, so in 2018, Graviton was released um, um, to offer the best pri price performance on Amazon EC2. Right, originally 2018, we were sort of proving that we could run ARM-based instances in EC2 just like x86 with the same experience, same elasticity, wide OS support, et cetera, et cetera. Then in 2019, 
uh, Graviton 2 was released, had four times the amount of cores, you know, 64 cores and two times the performance per core. And so we sort of went from curiosity around ARM and, and into proving um, the best performance and price performance uh, for a number of EC2 workloads. So tens of thousands of customers, including the top 48 customers of top 50, uh, top 48 of top 50 EC2 customers benefiting from Graviton. And finally, with Graviton 3, two years later, um, you know, uh, it, it stepped up the performance up to 60% less energy uh, usage and the same performance of comparable EC2 instance types. Um, so, you know, lots of innovation, lots of performance increases coming. So uh, with Graviton 3 based instances, we continue to, del to deliver the best price performance and the best performance per watt of energy use in EC2 for customer workloads. Uh, and again, as you can see, um, energy efficiency up to 60% more energy efficient versus comparable EC2 instances. And so, you know, sort of th thinking this through, how does this happen? So um, a lot of this has to do with uh, the, the design of the chip itself. So because we innovate at the chip level, we're able to focus on the features that matter to customers' cloud workloads and, and leave out unnecessary features. So in this case, let's talk about uh, multi-threading. So in, in the case of a traditional x86 processor, each vCPU is a is a uh, simultaneous um, multi-thread or SMT is as well. So so um, each vCPU uh, is a hardware thread or a virtual core. So when the CPU is not busy, SMTP improves utilization of the shared processor execution resources. Um, however, um, as the as the workload gets busy and the and the processor gets busy, uh, heavy utilization of CPUs sort of leads to inefficiencies due to the resource contention in the cores and, and the caches. So in in contrast with Graviton instances, each vCPU is actually a physical core, right? So Graviton vCPUs don't interfere with each other, and, and this enables customer workloads to scale consistent, consistently, even at full load. So th these vCPUs have a stronger security boundary. Um, with Graviton, they're designed uh, with customer cloud workloads in mind to run uh, fast and run efficiently as well. So what about at the server level? So we talked about the CPU, but we also have end-to-end -end ownership of the physical servers as well. So in the data center, you have racks, and each rack, there's a certain amount of provision power. Um, but you know, when it comes to traditional data centers, you typically run out of power well before you run out of space. Um, but in the case of Graviton, and specifically with Graviton 2, we actually run out of um, space before we run out of power. So, so what do we do about that? Well, um, in the case of this, right, with Graviton, we actually designed the chip um, and, and package it all together to fit the motherboard. So in this case, we actually um, added an additional uh, CPU socket. So we, we have a three socket design, and this allows us to host 50% more of these efficient instances with less power for cooling, less space in the data center, which ultimately leads to um, lower embodied carbon. So to summarize, with Graviton 3 based instances, we continue to deliver the best price performance and the best performance per watt of energy use in EC2 for customer workloads. Um, this pace of innovation is enabled through our investments in custom silicon and end-to-end -end optimizations from the chip level to the server and rack level in both hardware and software. So let's talk now about how um, AWS Graviton enables sustainability. And we'll do this by walking through some real examples of, of customers. Um, so keep in mind, sustainability is a shared responsibility. And so sort of you're probably familiar with the security shared responsibility model of the cloud. Um, the same applies for sustainability, right? Where AWS is responsible for optimizing this, the sustainability of the cloud, delivering efficient shared infrastructure, water stewardship, and, and sourcing renewable power. While customers are responsible for the sustainability in the cloud, optimizing workloads and resource utilization and minimizing the total resources required to deploy your workloads. So, so let's walk through some customer examples here. I like this quote from Peter DeSantis. He's senior VP of AWS and at reInvent 2020. He said, the greenest energy is the energy we don't use. So how does this look uh, from a customer's perspective? So Graviton performance efficiency enables customers to do a couple of things. In one case, it allows customers to reduce the fleet size of the workload. In this case, Snap, you know, known for Snapshot and, and Snapchat and Bitmoji, um, by using Graviton based two instances, they were able to reduce the overall messaging fleet size and significantly lower the cost compared to C5 instances that they were running on previously. So with moving to C6G instances, they reduced their CPU utilization by roughly 10% because of the better performance. So overall, they were able to reduce the number of instances powering their workload thanks to the efficiency, performance efficiency that Graviton brings. Um, 
another example is to use a smaller instance size. In this case, Sprinkler, um, they were able to take um, uh, their their Java based search workloads and utilize uh, the EC2 uh, IM4 GN and IS4 GN. GE and instances powered by Graviton2. In this case, they were actually able to use smaller instances because the smaller instances offered similar performance compared to the larger i3 EN instances. And so this presented an opportunity to reduce the size of their instances, therefore um, reducing um, latency for their queries, as well as uh, a significant 40% price performance benefit by moving to Graviton. It also only took them a couple of weeks to, to complete their benchmarking and, and uh, you know, move their overall workloads to Graviton. So a uh, great use case of reducing instant size. Um, or you can do both, right? In this case, CyberAgent, um, a Japanese internet media services company, um, they were actually able to reduce the fleet size of their workload and use smaller instances by taking advantage of the Graviton performance efficiency. Um, so in this case, again, when they adopted Graviton, they found out, well, they could run on smaller instances because uh, the, the instances were more performant, uh, again, um, uh, utilizing Graviton, as well as reducing the overall fleet size that they ran, allowing them to have a, a cost reduction of 50 to 60% um, by taking advantage of Graviton. So not only are customers uh, outside of AWS and Amazon taking advantage of Graviton, but also Amazon itself has, has been able to um, meet sustainability goals by taking advantage of Graviton. Um, this this uh, Amazon Science publication here outlines this, but just a, a snippet here. We've talked about how there's been a massive movement inside of Amazon for general workloads to move to Graviton too, mainly to save on power, but also on costs. And so for those same workloads, Graviton 2 enables uh, an average uh, consumption of 60% less power than the same generation competitive offerings. Um, and, and by taking those savings, we're passing on those savings to, to customers. <clears throat> Likewise, uh, this study of, of Prime Day in 2021, we, we see how uh, you know, the overall consumption of CPU increased by 12.5% of um, Prime Day in 2021. Um, but due to the increased efficiency of using Graviton, they were actually using 6,000 fewer, about 6,000 fewer physical servers than Cyber Monday um, 2020. And so um, Graviton 2 enabled this because um, you know, even though they used more overall compute power, they were actually able to use 6,000 fewer physical CPUs thanks to Graviton. Um, and as, uh, same, along the same lines, the 40% price performance advantage of Graviton 2 um, resulted in 20% lower cost, turning into big win and savings for customers. Um, and then piggybacking on 20, Prime Day 2021, looking at 2022, again, um, 2022, in 2022, Amazon increased the total number of normalized instances, which is an internal measure of, of compute power of uh, Amazon EC2 usage by 12%. Um, but this resulted in an overall server equivalent footprint that was only 7% larger than 2021 um, because they continued to adopt Graviton. So again, increased overall compute utilization, uh, but a, a smaller EC2 overall footprint. So how do we get started with Graviton, right? So um, First of all, find the wor the instance type that matches your workload, right? So in this case, we have a healthy uh, number of instance types and families in Graviton and um, in, in, with Graviton-based uh, processors. So find the instance type that matches your type of workload, whether it's general purpose, burstable, or compute and network intensive, memory intensive, storage intensive, or, gra or graphics space intensive machine learning type workloads. There's there's a Graviton instance type that that can help you. So you know find the, the instance type a family that work, that fits best for you and start to do your benchmarking and to start to do your um, um, your testing uh, and, and understanding how to take your pipeline to take advantage of graviton based instances um, also there are uh, there's a healthy set of database managed services that do support graviton as well so um, in this case we have databases we have analytics compute machine learning all services that underneath can take advantage of graviton natively with built-in support of Graviton. So go find the service that works for you. Uh, I, I suggest, uh, you know, a great way to get started is to take advantage of these services that take advantage of Graviton and, and try using Graviton that way. Um, here's a list of getting started pages. Um, you know, check out these links. There's a, a, a Graviton getting started page in GitHub that you can follow. There's a porting advisor. There's a well-architected sustainability pillar, and there are workshops that you can use. So go find these links. Um, check out um, how to get started quickly with Graviton. Um, dive in, um, and, and I think you'll find that uh, 
taking advantage of Graviton is a is a fast and efficient way for you to um, to save money and also to um, improve the sustainability of your workloads on the AWS cloud. So thank you for your time. I really appreciate it. Again, my name is Chad Schmutzer. Um, I look forward to hearing from you um, and, and how you were able to um, take your journey to to take advantage of Graviton. Thanks.